they are buying more and more so that shouldn't be your testimony your testimony should be that i'm growing i'm getting to know who i am i'm getting to know god better i'm maturing that's the primary function of the local church to grow you up to grow you spiritually and one of the attributes of spiritual growth is that you come to a place where you are free from deception where you cannot be deceived ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ and look at verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children that's one of the results of spiritual maturity that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sly of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive that we be no more victims tossed to and fro by any wind of doctrine anything that comes people people are flowing with it you flow with it tomorrow they say it's deliverance you join next tomorrow they say we're breaking courses you are sitting in front of that service Another tomorrow they say 35 steps to prosperity you are running with it another tomorrow they say now the new wave is that a bottle of anointing oil has all the things you need inside you carry one they say it's now pure water you you, you are tossed you don't know where you stand you yourself don't know what you believe you know carry the way toast around you see a poster in town without even knowing who is preaching what it is about just because the title is attractive you are sitting there you are toast you are still a babe you're not growing it means you are not enjoying the benefits of belonging to a local church because the primary assignment of a local church is to grow you to mature you and what matures you is the word of god it's not the hours of praise and worship that matures you is the word of god as newborn babes you desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby somebody shout i'm growing can i hear you shout it again so one of the things that you enjoy when you mature in god is that you are no more a victim of deception so the function of the local church is to build you up to build believers to mature you in god it's not breakthrough per se because many churches are built on breakthrough you know breakthrough solving people's problems that's not the primary mission of the gospel the primary mission of the gospel is to mature you in god to mature you in christ the primary mission of the gospel is not to solve material problems when you grow in christ you will discover you don't have a problem when you grow in christ you will know how to live in this world independent of the world system so maturity very critical very important very key somebody shout a good amen colossians 1 28 whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus that we may present you matured in christ jesus teaching and warning and the intention is to present every man perfect mature that the local church our mission is to present you perfect mature to grow you in christ to grow in the knowledge of god to grow in the knowledge of the truth second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture all graphe all writings given by the inspiration or the breath of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness why that the man of god may be perfect matured the mission of the scripture is to mature you that's the primary assignment of the scripture the primary assignment of preaching and teaching the word of god is to mature you all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for correction for reproof for instruction in righteousness why that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto every good work perfect unto every good work even the man of god needs to mature 
Even the man of God. That the man of God. Even the man of God. Not just the people of God. Even the man of God. Because there are men of God that are still babies. Even though they have the title of pastor. But they are not mature. They too are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. So they too need to mature. They need to sit down. And be taught. Thoroughly furnished. Decorated. Unto every good work. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now I'm going to be dealing with. After teaching you on sons. Or sonship and adoption and all of that. I want to deal with the believer unseen. The believer unseen. Because. There's, there's a lot of error. In the presentation of the doctrine of sin. And that has kept a lot of people in the body of Christ in bondage. So I want to look at the believer and sin. Um, let me begin by saying a believer must never be afraid of sin. A believer, one who believes in Jesus, one who is born again, must never be afraid of sin. I didn't say a believer should love sin. But I said a believer must never be afraid of sin. I didn't say you should love sin. Hallelujah. A believer must not be afraid of sin. That the man of God may be matured. When you come to a place of maturity, sin is no more a subject. You don't talk, sin is no more a part of your conversation. It's maturity. It's growth. The holy scriptures, the sacred writings. The sacred writings. The set apart writings. Set apart writings. That's why there's a book called the Holy Bible. It's sacred. It's set apart. It's not part of another curriculum. The Holy Bible. The Holy Scriptures. The sacred writings. So the mission of the entire scriptures is to bring you to a place of perfection. To bring you to a place of maturity. No scripture is of any private interpretation. But holy men speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The movement of the Holy Ghost. There is no scripture that is of any private interpretation. But the holy men of God speak. The writings of the scripture came from holy men of God as they were moved or inspired by the Holy Ghost. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 to 21. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we have established that anywhere you see the word holy scripture, we are talking of the Old Testament. The New Testament is not holy scriptures. The Old Testament is holy scripture. The graphe, the writings of old. When Peter was saying this, there was no New Testament. When Peter was making this statement, there was no New Testament. The only testament they had was the Old Testament that they referred to. And the Old Testament they referred to was called Holy Scripture. Jesus spoke in John chapter 5. He said, search the scriptures. When he was saying such the scripture, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all the books. He was referring to Genesis to Malachi. So when you hear the scriptures, he's making reference to the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi. That is why when he went to the synagogue, he didn't read from Second Peter. He read from Isaiah. And it was in that dispensation that he said, search the scripture. So the scripture refers to the writings of the law and the prophets. Are you with me here? Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This was Paul speaking. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. The gospel is the preaching of Jesus Christ. Our mission here is not to project anybody from me to you. Our mission here is to project Jesus Christ. 
the center of the gospel is Jesus Christ. If it's not about Jesus, forget it. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. According to what? What's the mystery? The mystery is the Holy Scripture. What is the New Testament? The revelation of the mystery. So the New Testament is the revelation of the scriptures. Now, it's important you understand that because of some statements I will make in a few minutes. That the New Testament is a revelation of the mystery. See, that's why Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 verse 11, Unto you is given to know what? The mystery. What was the mystery he was referring to? Genesis to Malachi. The mysteries of the kingdom. Genesis to Malachi. So Paul is saying that my own mission here is to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. The Old Testament is a mystery that even the writers didn't know what they were writing. They didn't know what they were writing because what they were writing was not for them. It was for us. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed. You will never see Jesus revealed in the Old Testament except you have the revelation of the New Testament to decode the mystery of the Old Testament. You can't understand the Old Testament by reading the Old Testament. The Old Testament is demystified in the New Testament. Because the New Testament is Jesus revealed. I'm going to show you something shortly. Are you in the house? I said, are you in the house? So kept secret since the world began. That's why therefore the preaching of the scriptures is so critical. It's very vital. The Bible is not just a book. When I start teaching you some things, you will know that, that your Bible you're holding is older than you. Very soon, we'll get there. You will discover that you've been reading this bible but you don't know what you're reading because listen the word of god is not like biology and it's not like chemistry the word of god is not like economics the word of god is a spiritual book yes, sir. Yes, sir. you can't read the word of god like you read newspaper this morning no no if you do that you are you are insulting your intelligence That's why to be without a Bible makes you a candidate of deception. There can be no Christianity without the Bible. No. It's not, it, you can't just be a Christian. Christianity is not just Christian. There is something that takes place in your life that, that satisfies that you are a Christian. And that is when this book leaves the pages of the Bible and becomes a person. As I've told you, the Bible is not the word of God. The Bible is not the word of God. But the Bible contains the word of God. Because the word of God is not paper and ink. The Bible is paper and ink. So the Bible is not the word, but it contains the word of God because the word of God is a person. Jesus is the word of God. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus is the word. He didn't say in the beginning was the Bible. The Bible was with God. The Bible is God. Without the Bible, not no, no, no. He said the word because the Bible is a container of the word of God. So reading the Bible helps you to have an encounter with the person. And until that encounter takes place, you become a religious person. You know religious? Yeah, you have religious knowledge. BK. Bible knowledge. CRK. And that's why when you have CRK, you read the Bible upside down. And you understand the Bible ups, upside down because it's a mystery kept. And it has to be unraveled. And it is unraveled through the ministry of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. To perfect you, to mature you. To grow you to establish you say I hear you God knows that you on your own will not understand much that's why he anointed somebody like me to open it and see what you cannot see and teach you precept upon precept so you too can see through my sight 
and understand through my understanding so you can grow yes you understand my gospel <laughs> amen are you in the house there's so much bubbling inside me so just follow me follow me this morning god punished the devil he will pay very dearly this morning so search the scriptures john 5 39 for in them you think you have eternal life and they the scriptures are they which testify so if you want to know jesus you must read where his testimony is the scriptures testify of me the scriptures testify of me the old testament is a testimony of jesus and the new testament is a revelation of jesus some say i only be carrying a new testament no you need the whole bible the whole bible is is yours but you have to see the old testament through the glasses of the new testament that's where teaching comes the bible is a compilation of several books so there has to be study if you don't study the bible you will read it upside down study means you have to look at it precept upon precept and take the word of god the way it ought to be understood and understand it for example if you don't study the bible well this is the kind of example that can happen for example you open the bible and you see judas kill himself you open another place like some of you open every day god speak to me through somewhere Pia! anything you see that's god that's rubbish that's not for the new testament believer so you saw judas kill himself you open another one do likewise you open another one what that door is do quickly oh satan can arrange it like that for you since that's the way you want it so it has to be rightly divided it has to be rightly divided i prophesy over you this morning your understanding is unlocked that amen is not an unlocked amen john 24 25 the bible said jesus was on his way to emmaus and he met some men discussing about the resurrection and he beginning at moses expounded to them in all of the scriptures what the things concerning himself so jesus therefore is the central message of the bible you cannot understand the bible except you look at it in with the eyes of jesus don't read the bible for financial breakthrough it's not an economic manual the bible is jesus so don't carry the bible to be looking for that's where error comes when you start looking for for just something that will make you happy no you have to look at jesus jesus he who spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not so every other thing that will come to you will come to you first when you embrace jesus how shall he not with jesus also freely so whatever comes will come after jesus comes i am confessed that you may have life first then after that abundance so you don't look for abundance you look for jesus you don't look for breakthrough you look for jesus first because jesus is the center you understand the bible by understanding the center of the bible which is christ the bible is christocentric it's a christocentric material it is centered on christ the message of the bible is christ that's why when he opened to them jesus from the beginning from the beginning he expounded to them in all of the scriptures in how many of the scriptures the things concerning himself luke 24 25 to 27 the things concerning himself because he is the message of the bible he is the message he said that the more fools and slow of how to believe all that the prophets have spoken next verse 26 ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory 27 and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself the things concerning himself because jesus is the center of the message somebody shout i hear you he's the way the truth and the life he is the truth is not a statement the truth is a person he is the truth the truth is a person when you receive jesus you received the truth you received the way you received the light that's why you can't have jesus and be looking for breakthrough he is the way 
He is the way. You can't have Jesus and be struggling with and be looking for deliverance. He is the light. Anywhere he enters, darkness is excused. The light, the truth, the way. You can't be looking for the way when you have Jesus. He is the way. I don't need a way. I have the way. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel this thing. God punished the devil. First John chapter 5 verse 20. And we know that the son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. He has. He is not going to give us. He hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. He has come and he has given us an understanding. An understanding of him. 1 Corinthians 2.16 We have the mind of Christ. That word mind means we have the understanding of Christ. He came and gave us an understanding. We have the understanding of christ our mind is christ's mind so we can understand christ when we hear christ yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. i don't care how long you have held on to a religious ideology once i bring the truth you will throw it away because the moment your mind hears jesus it will give up anything it held that was not correct yes, lift your right hand and say with me i am born of god born. very loud i am born of the world I am born of the word. I don't try to do the word. I do the word naturally. Because the word is my nature. I am born of the word. So doing the word is natural. I didn't hear your amen. So say, I'm trying to obey the word. No, no, no. You don't, except you are not born of the word. If you are born of the word, you don't try to do the word. You do the word. When you are born of, of flesh, you do what flesh does. When you are born by a man, you do what men do. You don't behave like a monkey. Because it's natural. Children behave naturally like humans because they are born of humans. So when you are born of the world, 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. James 1.18, of his own will begat he us by the word of truth, born of the world born of the world i am born of the world i am born of the world i am born of the world what about you i am born of the world i am born of the world hey i am born of the world incorruptible seed i'm born of the incorruptible seed other people can be corrupted i cannot be corrupted why i am born of the incorruptible seed which is the word of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So every scripture therefore must be looked at. Through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center. Don't just read scriptures haphazardly. Read them in context. That's the way to understand it. If not you will abuse the scriptures. Amen. You can't rush the scriptures. You must take your time. You can't rush it. If you rush it, you will miss it. You must take your time. It is too heavy to be rushed. You must take your time. You must take your time. And we that are teaching you must be patient to teach you because it takes a lot of patience. You too must be patient to learn it. And you must make up your mind to understand it. You must vow to yourself. I am born of the word. I must know the word. So whatever it takes, I will sit with it until I know it. Because to live without it is to pretend. To live without the word is to pretend. And stop pretending. Because you, you are doing yourself harm. It's like you are trying to act a monkey when you are a human. You are trying to behave what you are not. So stop pretending. Be who you are. Say, I hear you. Yes, be who you are. You are the word. Be the word. Live the word. Perform the word. Act the word. And manifest the word. Glory to God. I'm born of the word. Hey. Born of the word. 
hallelujah all right so let's get into what i i started i'm enjoying the word of god believe me. hallelujah i want to read a quote for you before i begin to deal with the believer and sin listen to this quote very carefully just listen he doesn't condone sin he doesn't compromise his standards he doesn't ignore rebellion and he doesn't relax his demands rather than dismiss sin he assumes the responsibility and incredibly sentences himself god's holiness is honored and our sins punished we are redeemed god does god god does what he can do so we can be what we dare not dream perfect before god that is a summary of the gospel can i read it again okay he doesn't condone sin he doesn't compromise his standards he doesn't ignore rebellion and he doesn't relax his demands rather than dismiss sin he assumes the responsibility and incredibly sentences himself did you hear that instead of overlooking sin which he doesn't because that would be injustice he takes the sentence of sin and puts on himself because he knows you cannot carry it. It's called grace. That's what David says, if you should count iniquity, who can stand? Who can stand? Who can stand? Who? He said, but there's forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Even David saw that. <laughs> now look at the rest of it god's holiness is honored our sins punished we are redeemed god does what he can do so we can be what we dare not dream perfect before god praise the lord isn't that beautiful god does not do evil james 1 13 and 14 let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man so don't say god is tempting me you're too small for god to tempt if god tempts you can you stand god tempts nobody he's not the tempter but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed god does not tempt anybody god is a good god and temptation is not good so therefore if god does not do evil does he use evil yes he uses evil on himself he doesn't use evil to teach you a lesson he uses evil on himself that's why he bore the evil that you should have borne that's grace he takes the evil that should have destroyed you and uses it on himself you see all we like sheep have gone astray and it has pleased god to put on him the iniquity of us all he punishes it on himself on our behalf it's called grace no, he won't overlook it. He will punish it. Every sin is punished. God is a God of justice. Sin cannot go free. It doesn't matter where you hide to do it. It has to be punished. But God ahead of time saw. And he took care of it on his son. And his son was punished. So that you can be freed from punishment. Follow me carefully. So God does not do evil. But God punishes evil on himself. He punishes it on himself. Somebody shout, I hear you. So please take note of this. This is a very important statement I'm about to make. 
our relationship with God is never based on us. Our relationship with God is never based on us. Never. Salvation is not your business. You don't have a hand in the business of salvation. Our relationship with God is never based on us. But it is based on his son Jesus. Our relationship with God is based on his son Jesus. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Which is shed for the remission of sins. It is shed for what? The remission. The word remit means take away. The shedding of the blood is for the taking away of sin. So salvation is not your business. It's God's total business. That's why you don't give your life to Christ. You have no life to give. Christ gave his life for you. You receive what Christ has done. See, I hear you. You receive. He says, for many, the blood is for the remission of sins. So the blood is the cure for sins. Hebrews 8, 6 to 12. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 8. For finding fault with them. The Old Testament is a fault finding testament. It goes around finding fault. Okay. He said behold the days come save the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day when I took them by the hand. To lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not save the Lord. Verse 10. For this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say of the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That is the charter of the New Testament. Verse 12 is the charter of the New Testament. If you remove verse 12 out of the New Testament, it becomes Old Testament. Medagoda. For I will be merciful. That is the charter. That is the basis of the New Testament agreement. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more that, kebota lama, that is the difference between the new testament and the old testament in the old testament all sins were punished on the people or the animal they brought but in the new testament all sins have been punished on Jesus and God says, because of this, I have poured out my anger on Jesus. I will no more be angry with you. Your sins and iniquities, I will not remember. Your unrighteousness, I will not take record of. He didn't say you will not sin again. He said, but I will not record it. He didn't say you won't sin. He said, but I will record it. I will hold it against you. That's the charter of the New Testament. If any preacher has not preached this, he has not preached the New Testament. Because this is the New Testament. Remember, go back. Re rewind because some of you, when I was reading, you were just enjoying my reading. You didn't hear what I was reading. Go back to verse 10. Go back to verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. This is the new covenant. This is not Genesis to Malachi. No, this is Acts of the Apostles to Revelation. This is the New Testament that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Say the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds. The Old Testament say, thou shall not. Thou shall not. The New Testament say, I will. I will. God has taken the responsibility to make sure 
that he helps you in the old testament you help yourself did you hear what i said so what is the new new testament then verse 11 and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the lord for all shall know me from the list god says i will make sure that you and your children know me how will i make sure you do that first of all i won't be a terrorist when you make mistake i won't beat you in your mistake i will love you when you fall down i will lift you up i will follow you around and show you my loving kindness when you're overwhelmed with my love and my goodness you must know me ah you will know me they get both they get, then you open the charter put up the next verse verse 12 this is the charter of the new testament this is why you will know me from the least to the greatest i will be merciful to your unrighteousness i will show you mercy your sins and iniquities i will not remember i will display my loving kindness on you glory to god Woo! hallelujah Woo! I said hallelujah so but based on what jesus has done therefore we are partakers of this blessing all right are you here if you're in the house shout i'm in the house hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 but now had he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon what somebody shall better promises can I hear you shout it very loud? The covenant we are in is better than the old covenant. In the new covenant is a new day. It's a different agreement. It's a different moment. John 1 12 says, As many as receive him under this covenant, it gives them the power, the right to become the sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did for know, he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among how many brethren? Many brethren. Somebody shout, Jesus is my brother. Can I hear you shout it very loud? Shout it very, very loud. That's a new covenant. Hebrews 2.10 That he may bring many sons to glory. Many sons to glory. Romans 8 says he may be the firstborn among many brethren. Hebrews 2 10 says many sons to glory. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who had blessed us with how much? All spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Where are you? In Christ. Where are the blessings? In Christ. No more cause. Next verse. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world. You've been chosen before you told your first lie you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love that is your destiny he already made up his mind whether you like it or not you are chosen and you will be holy and you will be without blame and he made all the provisions to make it easy for you to accept this destiny next verse verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will this is his will that you be holy this is his will that you are chosen this is his will that he will not be he will not hold any evil against you in his will and foreknowledge and predestination you were chosen according to his good pleasure his good pleasure is that he will not hold sin against you it gives god pleasure not to have a record of any bad some of you think god records every bad thing you do no that's not god god has the pleasure he gets is that when you miss it he overlooks it why does he overlook it because it has been punished somebody say my sins have been punished on jesus said very loud my sins have been punished on jesus i didn't hear your amen that's the way god wants us first john chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed the word bestow means lavish the father has lavished you know it's like a man that is not qualified for something it's like a man that is rich marrying a girl from a very poor background a wealthy man 
He get from a poor background that can hardly afford taking a pep to go to work. And the man just walks to a house, marries her. And immediately the relationship begins. He gives her a brand new Mercedes Benz. Before she could say Jack, he gives her a be beautiful house. Before she can say Jack, he opens for her one of the most beautiful boutiques in town. Before you could say Jack, he gives her vacation every three months in the location of her choice. What is that? Love lavished. This girl can faint. Because the thing is happening very sporadic. Bam, 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 bam. The love is too much. In fact, when she wants to greet the husband, she will kneel down with her legs and her neck and everything. Because this is too much. Is it not true? The reason why women argue with you is because you have not improved their life. When they were in their father's house, they were even better. See your head. That's why you say, shut up. You say, shut up, shut up. Who are you talking to? Go and see other women. They are taking care of them. You're, 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 shut up. Are you the first man this earth has ever produced? <laughs> oh, what, a, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, irrespective of our mistakes and our shortcomings, that we should be called the sons of God. Shout yes, somebody. That's why John could not hold it. He said, oh, behold, behold. The word behold means look at look at me me like this god loves me with all my mistakes with all my shortcomings yet god protects me looks after me takes care of me even when i don't pray he watches over me ah, even when i make some mistakes he uses the mistakes to work out his plan behold behold it is this love when you see this love nobody tells you to love god you respond not that we love god but that he first loved us when he gave us his love we couldn't help but respond somebody shout i hear you oh somebody shout hallelujah Woo hallelujah somebody say a good amen. amen bible say he is our wisdom first corinthians 129 jesus is made unto us wisdom righteousness sanctification he's made unto us redemption he is made unto us in the book of galatians chapter 2 verse 20 i live by the faith of the son of god he gave me his faith he gave me his wisdom he gave me his life he gave me his righteousness he gave me his sanctification Philippians 3 9 and be found in him not having my own righteousness he says that I may be justified by the faith of Jesus my justification is by his faith not even by my own faith why faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word who is the word Jesus so my faith came from him it's a gift from him hallelujah second corinthians 5 17 he calls us new creation any man being christ is a new creation ephesians 2 20, 10 says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god prearranged ahead of time that we should live in them we are his workmanship another translation is where his handiwork we are a product of the work of his hands created we are in christ in christ in christ in christ that's where we are i'm in him i'm in christ no sickness in christ i can't be sick no poverty in christ i can't be poor somebody shout hallelujah ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 put it up for me for he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us verse 15 having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments the ten commandments he abolished it contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twin one new man one new man he has removed the veil there's a coming together of one new man no more jew no more gentile but the new creation you don't have to go to israel anymore to be holy that you are in christ you're holy you don't have to go and bring holy water from Jerusalem. You shall neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain. But the time cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship their father. We are in spirits. 
man in the flesh cannot please God but you are not in the flesh put it up Romans chapter 8 verse 8 God punished the devil so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God verse 9 but you are not in the flesh you are not once you are in Christ you are not in the flesh if you are in the flesh you are not in Christ but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his somebody shout I'm not in the flesh shout it very loud I'm not in the flesh I'm in the spirit so I walk in the spirit I shall not gratify the desires of the flesh I didn't hear your amen you are not in the flesh you are in the spirit you are a man of the spirit you are born of the spirit the words I speak to you they are spirit and they are life that's where you are now look at Hebrews 11 6 but without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him without faith this scripture is not addressed to you but this scripture is for you it is history this scripture in hebrews 11 is history he's talking about the faith of the old testament without faith they couldn't please god you read on you see enoch abraham because those are the people who he was talking about here without faith they cannot please god then he now described their faith faith is a substance of things they were hoping for it but they never saw it the evidence of things not seen they never saw it abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is god and never saw it even when he came to canaan he was still looking for the city and god said this city is not for you but your seed will enter it oh, yeah. and that city he was looking for is zion and we're in zion now oh, yeah. abraham was looking for that city the place of being born again where we are now oh, i'm talking to somebody here so therefore this faith that they were talking about here is the faith of the old testament that's why in chapter 12 verse verse 2 he said looking away looking away from hebrews 11 look away from abraham look away from isaac look away from enoch look away from noah look unto jesus because that's the author and the finisher of your own faith not their own your own jesus is your faith the moment you receive jesus faith came on your inside faith is a person jesus is faith he's the author he's a finisher so faith is a person jesus is faith he comes in faith comes in say i hear you all right i'm saying this because i want to say something in another few minutes oh my goodness and get you somewhere thank you lord somebody say jesus is my faith Say it very loud. Can I hear your amen? amen? Look at this. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5. And this is a scripture the devil has used to confuse a lot of people. Hebrews 12 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourged every son whom he received whom the lord loveth now this is why when we say god will not punish you for sin this is a scripture that many people hold on to but i need to rightly divide it you see every scripture must be rightly divided if not you just carry one error and be running he said whom the lord love it he chastened it the word chastened means he corrects he disciplines and the discipline here is he disciplines by instruction that's the meaning of the word there chastening but the word scourge is where we have a little situation because to scourge means to scourge means to batter to batter somebody you understand like carry a bottle and smash his face bam now that word is wrongly interpreted and i'll show you why this scripture is quoted from proverbs chapter 3 
how do we know that the verse before this look at verse 5 so we can write remember i taught you in bible interpretation you must go through the pretext the post text to be able to understand the context all right so let's go back to the pretext verse 5 you have forgotten the exhortation that means he's quoting from somewhere the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children my son that's the quotation so he's quoting this from proverbs chapter 3 so let's find what proverbs 3 say that that way it's easy for us to know that there's something there that shouldn't have been there because sometimes the interpreters for lack of language you see when the bible was interpreted the english at that time is not the english of today that's why there are more translations there are even translations they call today's english is that true <laughs> because the king james english is like when you read you see um, let me give you one quickly except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god except a man be born of water and of the spirit when you read that you can be confused if you don't study because that what 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 you'll be thinking is that what it means is that i have to be born again step one i have to be born of water step two i have to be born of the spirit step three no that's not what it means if you study carefully what he was saying is except a man be born again which means except a man be born of water which is the spirit it's not and it's which is born of water which is the spirit He's still talking about the same thing. Still talking about being born again. Someone say, you know, it's one thing to see. It's another thing to enter. No, it's the same thing. It's just Bible language usage. And you have to study to be able to rightly. So Proverbs chapter 3. Let's find out Hebrews and balance it. God punished the devil. Proverbs 3, 11. My son, does this sound like what we are just reading? Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Verse 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected as, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. It appears to me here that there is an addition that is not in the original text. What is that addition that is not in Proverbs that is in Hebrews? Scotch. So that scourge is translation's error. It's not there. If you get to the original Hebrew text, you won't see scourge. Because you can't remember the relationship is talking about there is a relationship of a father and a son. There's nothing your son will do that will make you carry a bottle and smash his face. Except you yourself something has touched your brain that needs to be examined is that true i mean there's a way you even beat your child people in the compound will come and carry on your stick and tell you this is not how they beat is that true yes. <laughs> this is your son he's not a criminal so the word there in hebrews he was talking about discipline correction by instruction what am i doing now I'm giving you instructions and some of you in the course of this teaching correction is taking place you know why because God loves you and he's speaking to you through me as his sons oh somebody shout I hear you all right so I needed to clear that because that's very important because that's what some people have used to say how can you say God does not punish people the Bible say God even scourges no he doesn't God loves you he can't scourge you he scourged Jesus Jesus was scourged your chastisement was upon him. He was wounded. He was bruised. God put on him the iniquity. It will be double jeopardy in, in law for you to be punished for a crime that somebody has been punished on your behalf. It will be double jeopardy. It will be double entry. You don't do that. It will be injustice. It will be ungodly. Somebody took it. I won't take it. Somebody getting blessed out. I hear you. If you understand it, shout I'm understanding. Genesis 2 16. Let's go back to the origin of sin. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Verse 17. But of the not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Hello. Now you must understand that. There was actually no tree. The book of Genesis 
was written by Moses and Moses saw everything in a vision so therefore because it was a vision God had to use the language of he had to use metaphorical language to communicate or figures God couldn't have been talking Moses did not understand so God had to create some kind of image to give Moses concept from which to write the story of Genesis for example I will soon open it to you for example you know um, in in the vision of Peter Peter saw a sheet coming from heaven with four-footed beast is that true because that's the only way God could have communicated the message to Peter in a vision then God says, stand up, kill and eat. He said, God forbid. How can I eat that thing? It's unclean. Then God said, what God has clean, you shall not call unclean. That message was God bringing the Gentiles into the faith. But God had to use pictures. There was actually no animal. It was just metaphor. In Genesis chapter 3, when you read this scripture, you don't see the word sin here there's nothing like sin here is that true there's no word like sin all god is saying is what of the three of the knowledge of good and evil and some of you have said it was apple that's a lie if it's apple it can it as well be mango why not pineapple <laughs> or purple you know people just don't understand the bible this was meta a metaphor that god was using to communicate to moses what happened in exodus I mean in Genesis. But you cannot understand this scripture from this scripture. So to understand what happened here, you have to come to Romans chapter 5. Get to Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. For that, all. Did you see any three here? In Romans, did you see three? There's no three. This is the actual situation, but it was communicated to Moses in graphics so that Moses will be able to have an understanding to write with. Say, I hear you. Hmm. Now, when God told Moses that, I mean, Adam, that any, when he eats, he will surely die, it means there were two trees in this story. Two trees here implies that God gave man the freedom of choice somebody say well why are you people giving people a license to sin it was god himself that gave man the license from genesis god said see one tree see another tree choose if you eat this one you will die if you eat this one you will leave make the choice i give you the right to choose adam say god i choose that let me die it was choice. It was choice. God says, see it. Okay? Are you with me here? So it was choice that took place in the garden. If you read Genesis chapter 3, put up for me Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Verse 1. Now the serpent, take note, he didn't say a serpent. He said the serpent. The serpent. The serpent. The metaphor that God could use to describe Satan to Moses was serpent. The serpent, not a serpent. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the discussion went on. But take note what the serpent, the serpent was looking for here was what God said. The serpent wasn't interested in the tree, he was more interested in what God said. And Eve messed up what God said. And through that mess up, she messed up the whole of the human race with the cooperation of Adam, of course. And sin came into the whole world. Are you with me here? If you're with me, say, I hear you. Now, that was where it actually started. But we didn't hear the mention of the word sin until Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. 
This was Cain and Abel. So sin existed in the garden, but nobody mentioned sin until Cain showed up. Cain and Abel. Give me verse 4 of Genesis chapter 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So we see two people here. And these two people brought an offering to God. One brought fruit, one brought animal. Abel's offering accepted. Cain's offering rejected. Why? Was Cain a sinner? Yes. Was Abel a sinner? Yes. Why did God accept the offering of Abel and rejected the offering of Cain? Two of them were sinners. From the seed of Adam. Now, why did God reject the offering of Cain? It's very clear. But you won't see it in Genesis. You won't see what happened in Genesis. If you want to know what happened in the story of Cain and Abel, you've got to go to the book of First John. Turn your Bibles. First John 3, 11. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous uh, are you in this service if you're in this service i'm in this service do you know what the bible is talking about here that the works that cain brought was evil and the one abel brought was righteous so there was a situation here with the with the offerings what made the offering of abel righteous and the offering of cain evil is it because abel was righteous and cain was evil no two of them were sinners so what made abel's offering accepted in hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 by faith abel offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice than cain what made abel's sacrifice more excellent than cain because in the family of abraham abraham explained to his children and his wife that for sin the only sacrifice that god accepts is blood when i and your mother adam and eve fell the only way god could talk to us was to kill an animal and cover us with blood so for any sinner to be accepted before god he has to come on the basis of the blood now the father explained that so when it was their time to approach god abel came with the blood Cain said, I will not go by the blood. I will go by my own works. I will go by my efforts. Abel came by the blood. Cain went by his efforts. God rejected Cain's sacrifice because there's nothing you can do that God will accept. The only thing God accepts is the sacrifice of Jesus on that cross. I don't know if somebody's understand. So, so it was a situation of somebody coming by works and somebody coming on the basis of the blood. So Cain came with works. Which works? Works of unbelief. Honey, Cain didn't believe. The father told them. Cain disbelieved what the father said. That's why in the book of Numbers, the Bible says, let, let, he said, the evil works. They brought evil report. In Hebrews, he says, let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. He said of Cain here, that in, 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 of Cain in 1 John, he said Cain was of the evil one. From the beginning, he was of the evil one. Why was Cain of the evil one? Because Cain made up his mind to resist God's standard. He said, I will deserve it. And if I can't deserve it, I don't want it. So God rejected his offering. Abel came and said, there's nothing I can do that will be acceptable except by the animal sacrifice. He brought the blood and God accepted it. Somebody say, I hear you. Are you understanding? All right.
Unbelief gives birth to self-righteousness. When you don't believe God's word, you start trying to earn what only Jesus can give you by efforts. Unbelief. I know myself. I'm a moralist. I'm a very nice guy. I will go to heaven. You'll be in a hell. In a hurry. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. By what? The blood of Jesus. Abel brought blood. Cain brought works. And the Bible says, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one. Who is this wicked one? John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. And the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from when? Now, when we say beginning, what are we talking about? Eh? Power city? When we say beginning, what are we talking about? Genesis. He was a murderer from when? From Genesis. Where did he murder in Genesis? Cain. Murdered Abel. So, it was Satan operating in Cain to kill Abel. Because Cain, let me ask all of you a question. Look at me for a minute. Are you awake? If you're awake, shout amen. amen. Look at me for a minute. Who was Cain angry with? Abel or God? Eh? Eh? Are you sure? If you're sure, say it very loud. Yeah, Cain was angry with God. The anger of Cain was not Abel. The anger of Cain was God. How can God say, I cannot approach him with what I have? I have to come with blood. So in rebellion, he brought banana. Cocoyam. You know Cocoyam? Yes. He said, after all, God can take anything. This is all I have. He brought Cocoyam, brought banana, brought uh, carrots. Whatever. God, 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 God rejected. There's no other way to approach God other than Jesus. Your relationship with God is not because you can pray. It's not because you can fast. It's because of what Jesus has done. Outside Jesus, you're on your own. And I declare over you today, on the basis of what Jesus has done for you, whatever is not of God planted around your life is rooted out now. It's abolished right now. It's cancelled right now. I declare over you this morning by the blood of the everlasting covenant. Mengrato ke barana kina monga. Lebro jakrata kele ne bosa te balana menge. Mengrato kele ne mosa te barate belete boroso kele ne maha. Whatever is contrary to the finished work of Christ on the cross that is still hanging around your life, I command it to be destroyed now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pull it down, I overthrow it, I scatter it, I destroy it. And in the name of Jesus, I decree right now, on the basis of the finished work of Christ, on the basis of the blood that speaketh better things, wherever you're standing this morning, I declare you justified. You're holy, you're righteous, you're holy, you're righteous, you're holy. You are righteous and accepted before God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father for what Jesus has done for us. We give you praise. You are decree over everybody this morning. Watching my television in this building. Where self efforts have failed. Where all your struggles have failed. From this moment. As you resign and surrender to the finished work of Christ. I command whatever was not working to start working right now. Start working right now. 